There is a war taking place today that I have been preaching about for the past month now. A war against, or again, that is between good and evil. The sixth chapter of Daniel, it opens up with Daniel having won many battles in his life. As again, he stood in the battle of good and evil. He stood on the side of good. We see here in the opening of the sixth chapter of Daniel that Daniel, he is now living under the Persian king Darius. I know some of us say Darius, but it's Darius. And we'll see that in the second verse that Darius had appointed him as one of three governors over 120 provinces, satraps we see there, who were governors as well. But Daniel is set, he is one of three governors who were set over them, again, in Persia. Then, because Daniel had distinguished himself, we're told that in the third verse that Darius saw that Daniel had an excellent spirit about himself. And so Darius, the king, he considered setting Daniel over the whole realm of Persia only under him. So this once young slave that, that served in the courts of Nebuchadnezzar, he was now prospering, wasn't he? Daniel, it seems that he was blessed, doesn't it? Now, with this information in mind, I, again, want to continue to draw a parallel between Daniel and all of us today, we who are of sincere faith. The first parallel that I want to draw here is that as Daniel was a distinguished worker in the eyes of Darius the king, I tell you today that we, as sincere believers, we, the faithful believer, we are distinguished workers in the eyes of our king. The eyes of our king is the Lord, our God. We have become distinguished workers, if you're wondering. We have become distinguished workers through the renewing of our spirit by the Holy Spirit. We have been sanctified by the blood of Jesus. And because the blood of Jesus sanctifies us, it sets us apart from the workers of the world, from the workers of iniquity, from the workers of wickedness and evil, from the workers of sin. You are not like them. They are not like us. The second parallel that I want to draw here for you. As Daniel was assigned to a high position in the, the Persian kingdom, we have been assigned to a high position in this world by Christ himself. For those of you who may be wondering, for those of you who may be curious about what this position is, Christ has made you a steward of the gospel. We are stewards of the good news of Christ. We are stewards of the good news of salvation. And so what this means is that the sharing of salvation, the sharing of the gospel, it has been left in our hands. It has been left in our care. So this is a position that we should treat with love. We should treat this position with dignity. We should treat this position with honor. There goes that word again from our Sunday school lesson today. We should treat this position with all manner of respect. One more parallel. The third parallel that I want to draw here for you. As Darius considered a promotion for Daniel because of his excellent spirit, our king has an even higher position in mind for us. And again, for those of you who may be wondering, God, he has promised us everlasting life, hasn't he? Yes. But even more than that, the book of the revelation of Christ 
shows us that the Lord desires for us to reign, that is, for us to rule with him in his heavenly kingdom, not for a short period of time, but forever and ever. Do you want to reign with him? That's the position that God has in mind for you. And so as we see with Daniel in the battle of good and evil, you can and you will prosper because the Lord, he wants you to prosper. However, something that we have come to know is that evil does not love to see you prosper. Evil does not want to see you prosper. And so because evil does not want you to prosper, evil will do everything it can to keep you from prospering, to keep you from being blessed by God. The battle of good and evil, it wages on. And so with all of that in mind, as the king we see there in the sixth chapter of Daniel, as he considered promoting Daniel, Rather than being happy uh, about a future promotion, a potential promotion for Daniel, we'll see there in the fourth verse that his peers, that, that they sought to find some kind of charge that they could use against Daniel. Mm -hmm. Many of us probably wouldn't expect any more than that, would we? I got it right. In fact, we, again, we have trained ourselves that that when something good happens for us, we have trained ourselves to prepare because trouble might be right behind it. We, we believe that, that when something good happens for us, we believe that something bad about to happen as well. Ain't that a shame? Now, you can imagine that those wicked men that they searched all over the place trying to find something they could use against Daniel. You no, know, they... That's what the wicked people like to do. That's what wicked folks love to do. You know, they think that everybody is like them. They think that everybody is as, as wicked and as evil as they are. And so instead of paying attention to the, to the skeletons that, that, that's not in the closet for them, because their, wicked and their, their wickedness and their evil, it's on full display for the world to see. They'll try to get to your closet, and they'll try to open up your closet for, for some skeletons to fall out into your closet. And then they want to hold it up and say, see, 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 they just like me. Yeah. <laughs> that's what they was trying to do with Daniel there. We know how wicked folks are. Mm -hmm. Now, still there in that fourth verse, we'll see that in Daniel's case, that they couldn't find anything against him. And, and the reason why they couldn't find anything against him was because we're told there Daniel was faithful. Now, now what this means here with Daniel being faithful in this case here was that, that Daniel, he was disciplined in his works for the kingdom of Persia. He didn't slip up while he was on duty. You know, he didn't, if he made any accidents, if he made any errors, I imagine that, that Daniel, that he reported it. Again, remember here, the king saw that he was a distinguished worker, that Daniel had an excellent spirit about him. So why did they think that they could find anything to use against him in his works? Now, just because they couldn't find anything to use against Daniel in, in his works, that didn't mean that they was going to give up. We know, again, how wicked and evil folks are. We know that the wicked and evil, they don't just give up, do they? <laughs> you see, evil is a big proponent of the mindset. You may have won the battle this time, but you won't win the war. They like those old cartoons, the Looney Tunes that we used to look at. You, you may have won this time, but the battle ain't over. The war ain't over. That's the mindset that they have. And so we'll see that in the fifth verse. Still just taking a look at the sixth chapter down there. That those wicked men, they, they conspired together. They consulted each other. They said amongst themselves, we shall not find any charge against this Daniel unless we find it against him concerning the law of his God. And so we'll see that in the sixth and the seventh verse again. We're told that they, they all consulted together to bring the, a decree to the king. And they made this plan that, that whoever made petitions, that is, whoever prayed to any God or man that wasn't the king himself 
was to be thrown into a den of lions. Now, now they said there, whoever, but, but, but let's not play dumb here. This decree, it was all about Daniel. This plan that they came up with, this plan, it was purposely crafted against one man, against Daniel. Now, the fact that they came up with this, this plan, it tells us a great deal more about the wicked and the evil and how they scheme. Mm -hmm. And I've told you all this. I've said this to you all before. Don't you think that wicked and evil folks are stupid? Mm -hmm. Don't you think that they're dumb? Mm -hmm. Don't you think that they're ignorant? Mm -hmm. Don't be fooled by them because they're not wicked. They're not stupid. They're not dumb. They know exactly what they are doing. These men, they had studied Daniel. For them to craft this law, for them to come up with this plan, they knew Daniel. They understood Daniel. Mm -hmm. they, they knew that there was no stopping Daniel from, from being faithful to his God. Mm -hmm. They knew that Daniel, that he was disciplined, that he was disciplined in his faith. They knew that he was obedient in his faith that he would never stop praying, making petitions to his God. They knew that about Daniel. Mm -hmm. And so because they knew that about Daniel, we see that these men, that they set and made a trap. Mm -hmm. That's what the wicked and the evil will do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they can't get you one way. They'll try to get you another way. They'll set a trap. And so that's what these wicked men did. They set a trap for Daniel. As the wicked and the evil studied Daniel, I tell you today, again, and another parallel here for you, you better believe that the wicked and the evil, they study and they know you. As the wicked and the evil sought to trap Daniel, I tell you today, you better believe it. The wicked and the evil, they will conspire against you. As the wicked sought Daniel's demise, I don't know if y'all hearing me here today. You better believe it. The wicked and the evil, they seek your demise. What do you think the battle of the good and evil is all about? So you must come to understand what Paul did. See, we may see flesh and blood, but we ain't wrestling against flesh and blood. You see, Paul said that we wrestle against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual hosts of wickedness that Paul pointed out. Hey, they even in the heavenly places as well. So I, I, I would tell all of you today that before Daniel was ever thrown into a den of lions, Daniel, he was already dealing with the lions. As Daniel was, was dealing with lions, I tell you today, all of us, we are dealing with lions as well. Before he was ever thrown into the lion's den, literally, he was already in a den of lions. And I tell you today, in this world that we live in, we in a den of lions. I don't know if y'all know it or not, but now you do. You see, the lions that we face today, again, are those wicked and those evil spirits that, that Paul wrote about. Those demons that we face on a daily basis. You don't wrestle against flesh and blood. You may see flesh and blood, but we up against some demons today. Even more is what, what Peter would add on to that in the, in the fifth chapter of first Peter in the eighth verse where, where Peter, he pointed out in a warning to all believers that we need to hear. Peter warned us that the devil, like a roaring lion, he out there and he's out there with one purpose, seeking whom he may devour. 
whom he may consume, whom he may eat up and destroy. I feel with this in mind that we need to consider, since we're talking about a lion's den, trapped in the lion's den, that was my thought for today. I feel like we need to consider for a moment the ways of a lion, how they hunt. You see, I, I, I don't know how many of y'all look at animal videos like how I do every now and then. I look at animal videos earlier this year. I haven't been looking at lions. And I was just watching the lions, how they hunt. Didn't know that I'd be using it now, but here I am. I guess that's how the Holy Spirit works, even with something like that. And, and, and something that, that I noticed about the lions is as a hunter, lions, they are extremely patient. You know, dogs, they love to chase. They, they love to chase after. But lions, they ain't looking to chase. They'll just stalk their prey. Lions, they, they can focus in on that one prey, and they can just keep on following them as long as they keep on going. The lion will be right behind them. And if the prey isn't paying any attention, the lion, the, the lion will start creeping in. And, and the lion be looking for that one moment for their prey to slip up that one moment of weakness before again, like I said, lions, they ain't looking to chase lions will ambush and, and lions. They wait for that one moment of, of their prey to slip up so that they can ambush that prey. And they got these long, big old canines to where when they sink those canines into their prey, that's it. It's over. As my dad would say, Kate about the doors. They ain't letting go. They ain't letting go until it's death. We need to know this because again, we in a den of lions today. And that old devil, he's a roaring lion. The fact that, that Peter said that the devil is a roaring lion, that says a lot as well. Because what that says is that the devil, he ain't even bothering to try to hide himself. The devil, he wants you to know that he is there. Well, why does he, think about it, why does he want you to know that he is there? Well, the reason why he will want you to know that he is there is because he wants you to be afraid. The devil, he wants you to be fearful. The devil loves to try to stir up the spirits of fear, anxiety, worry, and stress. He loves to stir those things up inside of you. He loves to, again, create these demons, these inner demons that you have to, to fight against on a daily basis so that it is not just him, so that it's not just those, again, those spirits of, of wickedness and evil, but it is your own self that you have to face in the battle of good and evil. We can be our own worst enemy. So we ourselves can also be a lion in this den. So what do we do? What do we do about all of this? How do we overcome the persistent attacks of the wicked and the evil? How do we overcome those that continually conspire against us to see us fall down? What do we do? Well, as Peter instructed there, and again, the fifth chapter of first Peter in the eighth verse, if you happen to write that down, or if you're looking at that now, you can see where Peter, he instructed believers to be sober and to be vigilant to, in other words, be aware and to be alert. The last thing we should ever do is become complacent in our faith. Because again, we know that the enemy is out there and we know that the enemy is biding his time waiting for us to slip up waiting for us to fall into his snare, to fall into his trap. So again, we must be vigilant. We must be sober in this lion's den that is our world. Now again, getting back to Daniel there, 
when the wicked and the evil, when they conspired against him, Daniel, he did something there in my key verse for today. There in the 10th verse, Daniel did something that I believe all of us must do when the wicked conspire against us. Take a look at what Daniel did there in the 10th verse. We're told there in my key verse that, that after he had heard that the decree had been signed, Daniel, he went home. He went into his upper room, his special place. We're told there that he knelt down on his knees three times that day with his windows open towards Jerusalem. And we are told there that he did what? He prayed. Now, I want us to pay close attention to what Daniel did not do. You won't see Daniel do this in the scripture. It doesn't say that Daniel did any of this in scripture. And so we need to pay close attention to this. Daniel, he did not hang his head, did he? Daniel, he didn't grumble. He didn't complain, did he? The scripture doesn't say that he did any of those things, does it? Daniel, he didn't even go out in public and openly pray in defiance of the decree, did he? Daniel, he could have gone to the king to again cry and complain, but he didn't even do that, did he? Did Daniel panic? Did Daniel worry? Did Daniel stress? But Daniel, he was in trouble, wasn't he? He was in trouble, wasn't he? Did he fear? Something not right about this to me. Daniel's in trouble, isn't he? And he didn't panic. He didn't worry. He wasn't anxious. He didn't get excited. And he wasn't afraid. What kind of man is this Daniel? Oh, I got a God-fearing one. Why didn't Daniel panic. You see, Daniel had been in this position before, hadn't he? Y'all remember when Nebuchadnezzar, we saw in the Sunday school lesson, you're going to eat this. You see, at this point in time, in the sixth chapter of Daniel, Daniel was about 80 years old. He wasn't that young boy no more. And, and that young boy had a heart of conviction, right? 80 years now. He 80 years old now. I guess they asked that. I done got too tired to be worrying and stressing about stuff. He's 80 years old at this point in his life. So Daniel, he had done gone through some things in his life. He had done seen some things before. Ain't that what we say? You know, I'm about to be 40, you know, come, come next January. I can now say, Andrew, I done seen some things in my life. Ain't that right, D? We have seen some things before, right? And so because he had gone through some things, so because he had seen some things in his life, Daniel, he had become persistent in his faith. And, and, and in moving in his faith, Daniel, faith had become an instinct for him. Y'all following along with me with that? Moving by faith was like breathing for Daniel. It was an instinct for him. So we see Daniel now moving in a faith that is a disciplined faith. A faith that, that could not be moved. A, a faith that could not be rattled. A faith that, that could not be shaken even with being thrown into a lion's den even with the possibility of being trapped in a lion's den, Daniel said, oh, that's what y'all doing now. Well, let me just calmly go to, to my house. Let me go up to my secret place and, and, and let me pray. Don't get hung up on the fact that Daniel prayed. I want you to be hung up on the fact that Daniel moved by faith. Him praying was a part of him, him moving by faith. How many of us have that kind of discipline in our faith? 
to where our faith is like just breathing for us. To, to where when we are in trouble, we don't panic. We don't hang our heads. We just move by faith. See, a lot of times when, when things aren't going our way, many of us will hang our heads, won't we? Many of us, we will allow our hearts to drift into a, a very dark place where there is no light, where there is no hope. When trouble comes our way, won't we? Many of us, we will let our hearts go to a very, very dark place to where some of us, we will go to God in frustration. We will grumble. We'll complain. We'll be, we'll be upset. They done thrown me into a liar's den, God. Why did you let this happen? Some of us, in, a, in an act of defiance, because we'll, see, we'll think to ourselves, God, to allow me to fall into this den of lions. We won't even go to him in prayer. Like a roaring lion, they said. Like a roaring lion. Satan, he's looking for this very moment. This moment where you slip up. This moment where, again, you choose to, to not pray to the Lord. This, this moment of weakness. The devil has been stalking you this whole time, waiting for this moment, because this is the moment where he seeks to ambush you and seek his canines into you. Not into your flesh, but into your soul. Again, I tell you today, in this battle of good and evil, we must be more disciplined in our faith. We cannot let trouble cause us to panic. We cannot let things not going our way cause us to hang our heads and give up. We, be, we must be more disciplined in our faith because Satan and his pack, his pride of lions, they're looking for this moment for you to slip, for you to hang your heads, for you to take your eyes off of the blessing and for you to take your eyes off of them. This is the moment that the wicked and the evil that they're waiting for. Now with Daniel, we see that rather than hanging his head there again, just I want to really focus on this key verse today. Rather than hanging his head at the king's decree, Daniel, he chose to persist. So how do we get like this? How do we do that? How do we become persistent in our faith? We need to be persistent in our faith because again, the wicked and the evil, they, they don't give up. They, 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 they say, Hey, you may have won the battle this time, but the war's still going on. If they have that kind of mindset, Shouldn't we have that kind of mindset? So again, how, how do we get to this place? How do we build up the discipline that Daniel had in his faith? A few weeks ago, my brother, he asked me a question that, that kind of ran along these lines. My brother, he came to me and he asked me, how do you keep moving forward? What is it that inspires you to keep on moving forward? And, and when I answered his question initially, I said, I don't know. I just move forward. That was my answer to him. I just, I, I have to, I have to move forward. That was my answer to him. And after we spoke for another 30 to 40 minutes, we, we had talked about faith. We had talked about doubt. We had talked about completely trusting in, in the Lord. I realized that like Daniel, I have gone through some things. I have seen some things in my life. I've had quite a few tests in my life that again, required me not to lean on my own strength, not to lean on my own power, not to lean on my own might, but it forced me to look to God and to lean on him, to trust in him. Again, as the proverb said, we ought not be leaning on our own understanding. We should be leaning on the Lord, right? 
And so what I have learned in, in my life through my trials and through my tribulations and, and through my afflictions, that to be persistent in anything, it requires for us to make the same choice over and over and over again. See, when I played in the band, when I played trumpet, euphonium, and, and the baritone, you know, I had to keep on practicing and practicing and practicing over and over and over and over again in order for me to get better. Guess what your faith requires? In order for your faith to, to become, become so strong in it to where faith becomes an instinct for you, you again must continue to practice faith over and over and over again. What this means for us today is that again, we must learn to lean on God over and over and over again. No matter what it is that you're going through, you must continue to lean on God over and over and over again. Every trial that comes your way, you must be diligent in choosing to lean on God and not to lean somewhere else. No matter the affliction, no matter the demon that you are battling, you must make the choice. It is on you, not anybody else. If you want to be persistent in your faith, make the choice to be persistent in your faith. It's not rocket science. And, and I would apologize to anybody that I can't wave my hands in the air to give you a, a more magical answer than that. There is no tricks to it. It's all about practicing faith. You must choose. So again, in this case, to be persistent in your faith, you should choose to lean on God in every choice that you make. No matter what it is that you're dealing with, no matter what it is that you're going through, you must continue to Choose to lean on God. See, the notion is that if you do this enough times, you will become more disciplined in choosing to move by faith. When the wicked keeps testing you, you will have built up so much discipline in your faith that faith becomes an instinct. So that when they say, hey, yeah, I'm going to throw you into this den of lions, you just shrug your shoulders and You'll do like Daniel did. This is what we must do when the adversary continues to test, when the adversary continues to try us. We must do as Daniel did. Yes, Daniel, he went and he prayed. But most importantly, Daniel, he moved by faith. There are many of us who will go and will pray a prayer of religion. What I mean by that is that there are many of us who will go and pray, pray a prayer and there was absolutely no faith in that prayer. And then we wonder why the trouble continues to persist. Move by faith is what we must learn to do. For Daniel choosing to persist by faith was his primary nature. Because again, that's what he had chosen to do throughout his life. What are you choosing to do? in your life, in your troubles? Are you hanging your head? Are you giving up? Are you worrying? Are you stressing? Are you filled with anxiety in your heart today? If you're doing that, the only thing that you're doing is hurting your soul. It is it is poor health for the soul to be filled up with so much anxiety, stress, and worry because of what the wicked and the evil are doing. We must learn to, again, move by faith. We must learn to choose to persist in this life that, that we are living. Not saying that it is always easy for, for me, myself, to make that choice, to move by faith. But I tell you today that it's becoming more easier for me. It's becoming easier and easier because again, over the years, throughout my life, I've learned to constantly make the choice to God. 
I have constantly chose God more and more in my life. And I'm telling you, it has done wonders for me. It has done wonders for my soul. When I choose God over everything, the Lord, he uplifts me. He keeps me encouraged. He keeps me motivated to continue to put one foot in front of the other, no matter how often the enemy conspires against me. And that is what I share with all of you today. We must put one foot in front of the other. We must choose to put one foot in front of the other in our faith. So like David said, we must come to realize that the Lord is the light of our salvation and we have nobody to fear. You have nobody to fear. When the wicked and when the evil, when they conspire against you, they will stumble, they will fall. That is what you must come to know. That is what you must come to believe. And that is what you must move with in your heart. But again, sadly, many of us, we suffer from the same, but what if syndrome that Moses suffered from when the Lord called on him to go to Pharaoh? You see, Moses, if you aren't familiar with the story of Moses, Moses, he said to the Lord, who am I that I should go and stand before Pharaoh? And then Moses, he came up with all kinds of, of excuses as, as to why he shouldn't be the one to go and to stand before Pharaoh. Moses said, hey, man, you know, I'm slow of speech. I'm, I'm slow of tongue. Moses said, I ain't the right one for the job. And then God said to Moses, you can see this all in the third chapter and the fourth chapter of the book of Exodus. If you want to write it down and read it later, God, he said to Moses, he said one thing to Moses. He said, yes, I am right. But he said, I will certainly be with you. Did you hear that? When Moses was, was being so busy saying, I can't, but what if? Uh, I, I make an excuses. I, I slow a tongue. I'm, I'm slow a speech. God said, man, what you talking about? I will certainly be with you. God, he was essentially saying to Moses right then there in that moment, just trust me. Just trust me. And again, I will certainly be with you. You know, I feel today that so many of us, I feel we need to hear that the Lord is with us. He is certainly with you. And I feel that many of us, we need to hear that we just need to put our trust in the Lord. You see, the enemy desires for you to overthink things. The, the enemy desires for you to overthink things because when you overthink things, you're standing still. That makes you easy prey for the predator, for the enemy. The enemy desires for you to fear moving in faith. The enemy wants you to think that if you move in faith, you may, you may fall down. The enemy wants you to think that, hey, I'm out here. That's why I get Satan is roaring. The enemy doesn't want you to move because, hey, I'm here. I may get you. I might get you. See, the enemy wants you to believe that God is going to let you be destroyed. That is what the enemy wants you to think. But again, God, he tells us today that his thoughts towards us, they are not evil. They are a peace, a future, and a hope. And if you're consumed with the thought that God will let you be defeated, this highlights a major problem in you. The problem that it highlights is you don't completely trust the Lord. And in the battle of good and evil, when you are in a den of lions, I tell you today, you must completely trust the Lord. So you have a choice today. You have a choice today, whether you will succumb to doubt or whether you will choose to believe in the Lord. What will you choose? Will you doubt? 
Got an uh-uh. Or will you believe? Will you hesitate? Or will you trust in the Lord? You see, the most important choice we believers make on a regular basis today is whether or not we will trust in the Lord. When you wake up in the morning, you need to wake up in the morning saying, I'm going to trust in the Lord in your heart. Not verbally. I don't have to ever hear you say, I trust in the Lord. Trust in the heart. Trust in the Lord in your heart. And again, choose to persist. See, the enemy does not want you to persist. Predators like lions, the last thing they want is prey that will choose to persist. Prey that will put up a fight. That's the last thing that that the enemy wants. They want you to roll over. They want you to hang your head. But when you persist, the the predators, they lazy. They want an easy meal. When you persist, They're going to go the other way. Yeah, you see that in the temptation of of Jesus, when the devil came to Jesus. When Jesus chose to persist, the devil, he turned around like a roaring lion, and he went away with his tail between his legs. You see, simply put, to persist in, in your faith today, again, we must stop overthinking. We must stop doubting. We must stop giving up on God. We must trust in the Lord. And again, I tell you today, I'm sorry that there is no more advanced answer than that. It's easy to to build up faith that is disciplined. It's just difficult for us to trust in the Lord and to continue to choose to trust in him. We have to get over that hump of, again, consistently making the choice to trust in God in good or bad. We must remember that all things work together for good for those that love the Lord. You see, Daniel, he learned how to surrender himself to the will of God. That is what we must learn. Mm -hmm. You see, again, in doing this, Daniel, he learned to accept every potential outcome, whether good or bad. Daniel saw that it would be a blessing because, again, his God, our God, is in control. So, again, Daniel was accepting of whatever was in God's will. Do you accept whatever is in God's will today? So, again, to overcome the enemy, we must learn to surrender ourselves to the will of God. Again, I remind you today that his will towards you is not evil. It is of blessings upon blessings. When you put one foot in front of the other, when you completely trust in the Lord, yeah, there may be some hard times. Yes, there may be some difficult days, but God, he is leading you to the blessing. And so in the sixth chapter of Daniel, just to conclude what happened to Daniel, Scripture shows us that that when he had been thrown into the den of lions, the next morning, Darius, he came and he cried out for Daniel. He said, hey, Daniel, are you still there? Did your God, did he did he protect you? Did he save you? Did, Did he deliver you? And to his surprise, not Daniel's surprise, we see there in the 22nd verse that Daniel said to the king, my God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouths. Look at that. He said, my God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth so they have not hurt me. God won't let his children be destroyed. And this lion then, God will not let you, his child, he won't let any hurt, harm, or danger come upon you. Do you realize that God's angel has shut the mouths of all the lions that's around you today? I don't know if you heard me here. Do you realize, I'm asking, do you realize that God's angel, that he has shut the mouths of all the lions that's around you today? You see, God's angel is his only begotten son. And his only begotten son has snatched victory He has snatched victory out of the mouth of your enemies. 
God's angel, his only begotten son, Christ himself. He has snatched victory. Any thought of victory, he snatched it out of the mouth of that old serpent, that royal lion, Satan, the devil himself. And so, yeah, we may be in a lion's den today, but I tell you today, we ain't trapped in this lion's den. We are not trapped in this lion's den. By the power of God and through the discipline of your faith, I tell you today, in this lion's den, you are protected and you are free. So again, don't worry, don't fear, don't doubt. God's got your back, he has shielded, he has protected you, and you are safe in his care. Amen. 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 Thanks for watching this week's sermon. I hope that you enjoyed this week's message and I hope that you'll share it with someone somewhere. If you haven't done so already, make sure that you like this video, follow the channel as well as hit the alert bell so that you don't miss any notifications, so that you don't miss any of the wonderful videos that we share here on the Newfound Faith YouTube channel.